sin, it's in my soul. Welcome to the Salt Strong Podcast, disrupting fishing entertainment as you know it. Prepare to laugh. Prepare to get to know fishing legends in a whole new and unfiltered way. And on occasion, you might even learn a thing or two about fishing. Here's your host, Joe Simons, like diamonds. In a funk. Hey everybody, Joe Simons, like diamonds, back again. Salt Strong on Church on this funky Sunday and I don't know about you, but I've just been in a little bit of a funk this year, meaning it's um, just, I feel like things haven't been going my way like they were last year and even the year before. Um, momentum just kind of seems to have slowed and everything just seems like it's getting harder to do in both business, personal, just a, a lot of different things. And I, I don't think I'm alone, which is why I'm doing this podcast. I've... I've, I'm watching the emails that come in on you know a daily basis from people that uh, maybe like you that listen to Unchurched and have a question or just want to share something, get something off their chest or a prayer request. A lot of people are finding that anxiety video that uh, I put out there on YouTube. It's you know got hundreds of thousands of views. I'm getting emails constantly, I mean daily, from people that are finding that video and are dealing with anxiety. So I feel like anxiety is up, and and there is just a lot. There's it's just crazy. It's always crazy times. I'm sure people six years ago said the same thing. And this just feels different, maybe just because of social media and you're just bombarded with all the craziness that's going on along uh, with this whole political ride, you know, in 2024 to uh, just everything about people disagreeing on everything. We got inflation, which, you know, is real. Um, th there's, there's just a lot of things happening. I mean, people are getting laid off. I already have a, a few people that, that I, I know that have, you know, been laid off in the last just couple of months and, uh, just kind of uns uncertain times, which brings, you know, some anxiety and some, some fears and, uh, and some funk. And, uh, yeah, for me, I just, I feel like, and I hear, here, looking back, we, we got COVID, the whole family got COVID or Christmas, you know, and. It, and even though it wasn't a horrible case, if you've had it or have had it multiple times, you know, it's still just, it kind of slows you down, right? And it's not the way you want to kick off the year. I mean, everyone wants to kick off the year with tons of energy and, and feeling good and working out and, and all these cool plans, lose weight and be your best version of yourself. And uh, I don't know, it just, it was the year, it was kicking off the year with COVID was just such a downer. And I feel like we've just been digging our way out of it, at least me personally. And on the business side of things, we've just had a lot of operational things. You know, we, we hit 50,000 members and hit a new record last year, which is awesome. But any of you who've run a business or been part of running a business, you know, as you grow and have good growth like that, things start breaking, right? And you start breaking systems and, um, and not that anything's broken, but it's just been a lot of small little things. And I feel like every day I wake up and I've got an email about something else I'm I'm dealing with. And I don't know, it just feels like it's been such a grind. And for me, one of my biggest challenges, and and we all have this, I'm just gonna be open about it and you can decide to be open about it yourself or not. But we, we all have some internal fears and things that, you know, that it, it's, it, it's basically an insecurity. And for me, it's really around like losing momentum. And, you know, I, I, I had my buddy Chris McAllister on and he had that whole book about and there's there's really about six or seven things that most people have an insecurity about. And uh, for me, it really is. It's it's about poor performance, meaning if if things aren't going well performance wise and anything from sports to business, et cetera, I start feeling less loved and less, less worthy. And, uh, and that's, you know, just, it's just how I'm wired, right? Everyone is different. Some people it's the fear of just not being needed or not being wanted or not being loved or cared for. There's a lot of different ones. And mine just happens to be that, um, uh, that fear of, of poor performance. And when we start a year, like, like this year with just, lack of momentum and things just breaking or having to slow down to keep fixing stuff. It just, it wears on me. And then what I want to do personally is guess what? I, I want to work harder because I just want to keep proving and, and getting to that point where I feel like I'm loved and I'm worthy again. 
and and it can have a really bad impact on family life, et cetera, when, when I'm wired that way. And, and thankfully, I'm, I've realized that. And that's really what I want to share today. I had an instance with uh, my son, Jackson. So he came home and this is, this is after hours. You know, if it was in the middle of the day, uh, it might've been a different story, but it's, it's after hours. I should have been done anyways, but I'm just, I'm working to work to make sure I'm catching up and not getting behind. So it's like 6.05 or whatever. And uh, he really wanted to show me this new thing with this train that he built. And my immediate reaction, because I was right in the middle of something, was like, you know, shoo him away. And uh, like, man, I'll be there in a minute. Just leave me alone for a second. Like that was just because it's how I'm wired, right? I'm, I, I've, I got to get this thing done because we're behind and we lost momentum. And I just, I don't, I'm not feeling good. And I'm in a funk, right? And, and, it, and I stopped before I said it. And I think a lot of this is because of the reading I'm doing. And, and a lot of it too, maybe is, you know, just from me doing these on church is helping me being held accountable. And instead of shooing him away and, and probably disappointing him, because you, you could tell how excited he was. He was like running over screaming to me. I took a deep breath and I stopped what I was doing and just gave him my full attention. And, and walked over with him and grabbed my hand and wanted to show me this train. And we had this cool moment, you know, that was only maybe three minutes, right, of him just so excited to show me this train thing that he built. And he finally got this, this train to work and he put new batteries in it and it was humming around and going forward and reverse. And he was so excited. And... Uh, and then that was it. And, you know, then he went back to plan and completely forgot I was even there, but he was so excited to show me this. And that was a cool moment for me uh, and him, right? I'm, I'm sure there's little things that we don't think about how we react and, and how we handle things in front of our kids can have an impact on them. Maybe he might've been wired differently as an adult because of how his parents treated him, right? If, if we just completely ignored him, maybe he now has that fear of not being loved or not being, I'm just throwing things out there. But anyhow, that was a cool moment. And I learned right then and there that I can be in a funk. There's going to be times where things don't go well, right? I've even got another friend who just lost a, a family member. You, you can't really control that kind of stuff. The one thing you can't control, however, is your attitude around it and, and how you're going to behave and how you're going to treat people around you, right? Because I, I have every right, I guess, if you will, to be in a funk and just be mad and be grumpy and shoo away my kids and not want to talk to my spouse and just be in and negative all day long because of it. Or I can choose to not let it bother me put the funk on the side, on the business side of things, leave that there at my desk, and then just go be an awesome husband or an awesome father outside of it. And that's what I've really chosen to do. And even though we're in a funk a lot of times, you know, I'll get a little bit more stressed out when we go do some of our videos. Cause like, all right, man, we need, we need this video to work. Need this one to make a big impact. And uh, sometimes I'll get a little bit uptight about it. And and I really just sat there and prayed. I had an hour and a half drive to go meet, meet Luke where we we're going to go fishing and, and doing some filming. And uh, I was getting a little bit uptight about it. And I just said, you know what, God, just let me have fun out there today. That was my prayer. I was like, just let me not care. Let me be, let me have like childish fun. And I did. It was amazing. I, I went out there, even Luke, he's like, man, that was, that was pretty funny. What were you up to? Like, you're a different person. And I was like, man, I just said I want to have fun. Uh, I don't care. And we did everything in one take. There was, you know, normally if you, you're stressed out and you know this, if you've ever been in front of a camera, how to do anything that's important and you're stressed, like you, you, you get uptight, you stutter sometimes and you, you take more than one take. We certainly do. And uh, I just went up there and had fun and things were just rolling off my lips and I was just laughing and we were joking. And uh, it was a really, really, really fun little episode there. And uh, it was just reminding me how important it is to even when you're in a funk, because I, I still feel like I'm in the funk. And th this all just happened in this past week. And I, I still felt like we were just digging our way out and trying to get momentum again. But the cool part is even that day, I felt like we gained a little bit of momentum, momentum back. We're not where we want to be. Um, but it, it certainly felt like we gained a little bit of momentum and that the small things that just keep happening, like I said, you know how it is when it rains, it pours, it just feels like every day there's something else. And I'm just, I'm quickly learning that, you know what, let these things bounce off. They're not that big of deals. I'm probably not going to remember any of them in a year from now. 
right? That's another kind of litmus test that I always ask, right? All right. I know this is stressful. I know this is super frustrating, and irritating because it's preventing me from doing what I want to do, which is go out there and build momentum and, you know, be in front of the camera and do the fun stuff that I like doing as the CEO of Saltstrom. And instead of stuck in operation stuff, which I absolutely hate, but I'm getting dragged into it because it, there's so many little small things happening. I'm like, but am I really going to remember this a year from now? Am I going to remember this six months from now? It's just probably not. So why let it bother me? Why let it ruin my family life or, or that experience with, with Jackson? I, I remember my grandfather, um, my mom's dad, you know, she, uh, three, three daughters and my mom's got two sisters and they still, he, he's, he's passed away many, many years ago, but uh, they still talk about every memory they've ever had with him. And, you know, they went through a lot. I mean, he was, uh, you, you know, he never made the, a ton of money. And uh, so, you know, and with three girls and, and all, I can't even imagine all the things that he had to go through and his, you know, wife didn't work and there's a lot on his shoulders and not once did they ever see him stressed, not once did they ever come to him and he shooed them off. They literally said that, like he would literally, if he was in his chair, his office chair, he would stop what he's doing. He would swivel it over and look them right in the eyes with a big smile. And he's like, what, tell me what's going on. And uh, he would give undivided attention. Wow. So special, right? That all three of his daughters who are now in, you know, 70 years old, still that's their only thing they remember about him in terms of attention wise. And anytime they went to him, no matter what was going on in their lives, and they had some stressful times. I mean, you you know, over that time frame, I mean, they went through a lot um, of of you know, good times, bad times, times where you know they didn't have much money at all. And they said no matter what, he would stop what he was doing. They looked in the eyes with a big smile, give him full attention. They never saw him stressed, never saw him angry, never, never heard him curse a single time. And and I, I got to experience, I guess he passed away uh, when I was 16, 17. And I, I don't remember ever seeing him stressed or upset. Um, I, actually, he was upset one time when I was late for tennis, but... Um, I really never saw him stress and same deal. If you wanted anything, if you ask him a question, he would turn around and you had his full undivided attention. And and I struggle with that. Like I said, I thankfully it hit me right when Jackson was calling um, my name and I saw the excitement on his face. But so many times I've like, shoot away, I'm working on something, right? Or or some of us on our phones, right? I've I've seen I've seen myself do it. I've seen other people do it. I've seen my wife do it. You know, where we're in the middle of a text or something and you know, kids are grabbing on our leg and we're like, shoot away and not giving them our undivided attention. And I, I wonder what, you know, what, what that says. And I wonder what that tells these kids. And I wonder what impact it has on the long term. I guess we'll all, um, all find out. But the good news is we have a choice. And anytime that we're in a funk, if you're in a funk, kind of like me, where you feel like you've just been digging out all year long to get back to where you were and to kind of get momentum back again. Or if you lo you've lost, maybe you've lost your job or maybe you've, you've, you got a health setback or someone in the family is, uh, is ill or dealing with, you know, kid issues or whatever it might be, or spouse issues. Um, you just know that you still have a choice on, on how, uh, on, on how you're going to perceive everything and how you're going to look at everything else. Um, it, I don't think we should just put rose colored lenses on, on every single bad thing that happens. There are bad things that happen. There are things that are tough. There's things that cause some stress and anxiety. And there's some things that even cause, you know, some suffering and, and some pain. And, uh, and certainly we all experience loss. Uh, but that doesn't mean that we have to treat others around us poorly. It doesn't mean that we can't still be our absolute best on, on other things happening around us. It doesn't mean we can't give undivided attention to, to those that, that love us and are looking to us for that attention and, uh, and love. And, uh, and it certainly doesn't mean that we can't just choose to be happy and, uh, and, and have fun that, uh, th those videos, I, I don't remember having that much fun in a really long time, which is kind of sad, but in, in terms of like business videos, uh, we really just were having fun and joking. And, uh, and I'm pretty sure those videos will probably perform pretty well just because the, uh, the viewer could probably see, Hey man, these guys are just having fun out here in the water. Uh, they're, uh, they're having an absolute who, this is not business. This is just pleasure. They're having a blast. 
And um, so I, I challenge you to do the same thing. Like I said, I had a choice. It could have been there and just been angry and said, oh man, we're just in a funk and we got all the stress and we're gonna have to try harder to, to get back to where we were uh, or just have fun with it and smile and, uh, and be grateful. Thank God for, you know, the fact that we're still alive, right? And, uh, and, and that we have the ability to go out and do things that we enjoy doing. So hope this was uh, helpful. Hopefully it hit the right person. I always pray before all these that it hits the exact right person that, that needs to, to hear this message. Uh, know that I, I personally have been going through a funk this whole year so far, uh, where it just, like I said, it feels like I'm just constantly digging and putting out fires. But I know in a year from now, I'm not going to remember it. And I know all these little things, they only make you stronger. And it uh, and sometimes it's God, you know, building you up for something big that might be happening so that we can make sure that we handle it and absolutely crush it. So love you guys. Hopefully this was helpful. And I'll talk to you on the next episode. Cause this year, it's in my soul, it was pain.